Welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. In today's video, we're going to be looking at tungsten. Now, we've had a lot of requests and questions about tungsten selection, and today we're going to be going over the different types of tungsten and when they should be used and when they should not be used. I want to review for those of you that are new to TIG welding, um, this is very important to understand. The tungsten is actually used as the electrode in the TIG welding process, and of course, it is removable. In some text, you're going to find that the tungsten is listed as a non-consumable. But in reality, it is a consumable, and from time to time, you're going to have to stop and regrind the tip of the tungsten. Now, we're not going to go over uh, all the parts of the torch again, or tungsten insertion or breakdown or whatever. We're going to actually just stick it back in for now. And you can see that this uh, tungsten has a nice sharp point on it. Um, we're going to go over a couple of things about the tungsten, uh, but suffice it to say, um, there's a difference in the way you would sharpen a tungsten for a transformer welder or for a welder like an inverter Everlast TIG machine. Before we begin talking about the differences in tungsten itself, let's talk about the tungsten sizes. Now you can go all the way down to a .040 tungsten all the way up to a quarter inch if you need it. What we have here is a 332nd and 1 16th of an inch tungsten. Um, quite common is a 1 8th, but 332nd and 1 16th are going to be what you find locally at most welding shops. Now 332nd, especially for this type of tungsten that we have right here, covers a wide range of amperage. So if you're looking to do most general type welding, a 332nd electrode will work for you very well, down to about 20 amps. Now if you need to go down to 20 amps or lower, uh, or even up to 70 or 80 amps, uh, 1 16th will work fine for you. Now the dangers of putting too much amperage on any tungsten is that you'll eventually lose the tip very rapidly. Not only there are multiple sizes uh, and diameter of the tungsten, but you also have multiple lengths. And this is a, uh, what we call a 7 inch tungsten, and you're going to have a 5 inch tungsten. Now you can break this tungsten into any length that you need, especially for TIG torches with short back caps or medium back caps. You may need to step down to a five, or you can actually break the tungsten to the length that you need. You may have already noticed the paint on the end of the tungsten. Now the paint color identifies what kind of tungsten that we're dealing with. Uh, if you see green tungsten, this is going to note that it's a pure type of tungsten. This is all tungsten throughout this rod here. Now, the problem with green tungsten is that it's not designed to be used in any inverter. However, if you go into a welding supply store, most of your welding supply stores are going to try to um, sell you this, especially if you're going to be using it for AC or doing aluminum welding. Um, green tungsten will not hold up in any inverter, especially in an Everlast square wave inverter. Now, that's because this type of tungsten is designed to run with a ball, and inverters use a pointed tungsten. So the um, arc will actually destabilize with you if you're trying to use a piece of green tungsten in an inverter. So if you have an Everlast inverter, or about any kind of inverter for that matter, stand firm and tell them you don't want the green tungsten. They're going to look at you kind of crazy from time to time and tell you you have to use it for AC, and that's not true. Um, any kind of other color tungsten can be used in an inverter for AC. Uh, there is another type of tungsten that they use uh, for AC welding in transformers, and that's called zirconiated. Now, zirconiated is quite expensive, and most places don't stock it. So you have a transformer welder, Green tungsten's a good choice if you're welding AC. But as we said, in an inverter, it's not going to hold up and you're going to have pretty poor results. Now, let's talk about the most common electrode you're going to find next to the green. And in an inverter, this will work for AC or DC. You're going to find the red tip here. Now, the red tip it denotes this is 2% thoriated tungsten. Now, as I said, you can get it in different sizes but you're going to find that the thoriate is most widely used in the industry. The caveat to this is that the red thoriate is actually slightly radioactive. Um, don't go running for your uh, contamination suit just yet. Uh, this has been used for many, many years in the industry. Uh, it's safe to handle 
It's an alpha emitter. That means it won't penetrate the skin, but you definitely don't want to breathe the dust from it while you're grinding. Now, a quick point I'd like to make about this is that tungsten color and the percentages and some of the fine details about the composition of these tungstens will vary from country to country. And even from brand to brand, there may be some color differences in actually what I'm pointing out here today. Even though the thorium has some radioactivity as we discussed, and there are some potential health risks there, um, it is very good at what it does. It is uh, hard to beat, in fact. In fact, all these other colors we see here are often compared to the capabilities of thorium. Now, thorium does have a drawback where sometimes it tends to blister or tends to split the end at uh, certain amperages. Or if you're on AC, sometimes with the inverter, you'll see uh, little nodules down here form uh, if you've got too much cleaning action going on. These different tungstens have been tested at one test or one study at some time or the other. And the results have really been mixed. You're going to find some studies that recommend one brand over the other. A lot of it has to do with testing uh, uh, facilities. A lot of it has to do with um, parameters that they tested with and, you know, basically how they wanted to slant and interpret the results. Um, you know, one of the important things is arc starting and point retention in any kind of uh, tungsten test. Now one of the best replacements that has come to market is the gold band here which indicates the 1.5% lanthanated tungsten. Now the 1.5% seems to hold up in some tests better than the one right beside it with the blue band which is 2% lanthanated. Now either of these do show to be a very good replacement for thorium. Um, the one thing about the lanthanated is that they, it actually seems to hold a better point and you don't get the cracking or splitting that you can sometimes with the uh, thoriated. But, uh, you know, the arc starts seem to be equivalent um, almost, if not but a little bit better in some tests. Um, some people say it may not be quite as good. But overall, this is a very good choice for replacement. Now, we just said this was 2% lanthanated, uh, indicated by the blue band. Now, some companies and some... Uh, uh, different uh, countries you're going to find a black band or you're going to find some other color here but usually it's going to be a blue band at the top to indicate 2%. Now 2% is not a bad choice. It is a very good, very stable uh, welding electrode. Now some people will say that there is a little bit more tip erosion with the 2%. Uh, I'm not sure why but they do find that the one and a half does seem to hold the point just a little bit better. What we have here is the gray 2% uh, seriated. Now the 2% seriated um, was favored for quite some time before the research started showing that the lanthanated was actually outperforming the seriated. Now seriated has great arc starting capabilities, but one of the problems with seriated is it won't hold the point at a higher amperage level like the lanthanated. Uh, tungstens will. So that's one of the things if you're welding at a lower amperage and you know you're not going to be pushing the tungsten, uh, seriated might be a very good choice for you. Um, the, like I said, the studies show that seriated tends to erode a little bit on the tip when uh, it's being pushed, but uh, they say the arc starting capabilities are very good in comparison to uh, th lanthanated or thoriated. They're all very similar and we're talking about just a little bit better or there's not really an objective uh, way to compare the arc starting capabilities uh, that I've seen but anyway let's just put it this way seriated is not a bad choice either. Now we're going to deal with this last tungsten and talk about a wide category of tungstens that are available. Um, this is known as the rare earth category um, a lot of your tungsten makers now have come up with their own proprietary blend or special type of alloy that goes into it that's really not been subjected to a lot of scrutiny. Uh, you're going to find like a tri-blend or you're going to find different trade names for this type of tungsten and they're going to try to say it's better and best and new and improved and all that kind of stuff and what it boils down to, you've got to try it for yourself, you've got to experiment with it. Now this is 2% yttrium. 
Now, 2% Yttrium is hard to find. I special ordered this overseas uh, to be delivered to me so I can try it out. Now, Yttrium is often blended in your other mixes of, uh, of the special proprietary blends of, you know, Serio, Lanthanum, and uh, Yttrium. And uh, the, they blend them together in different percentages and different amounts and everything. And what it boils down to, no one really knows what's best. Um, everybody claims to be best. So I'm going to try this pure yttrium and I may give a report back later on how it works. Let's talk real quickly about how to buy tungsten. Um, tungsten can be bought online, obviously, and this is where you're going to find a lot of your more exotic stuff. Like I said, a lot of your smaller local welding supply stores may just have green and red, and red will work for AC and DC and in an inverter. Um, but if you can find it, buy it in a 10 pack because this is the most economical way to buy it. Don't buy it in a two pack or a three pack unless you're just wanting to sample for the first time. Uh, buying those small pieces like that uh, with, you know, just a, you know, you're paying almost as much sometimes as you can get a whole 10 pack for. So I recommend buying a 10 pack, spend the 30 bucks it's going to take. Uh, Thoriate is going to be your cheapest in that respect. These others are going to be a varying prices. You know, if you buy them online, sometimes you can find certain people will sell these all at the same price, and that's great. But sometimes you're going to find that quantities are limited. So what I would do is, if I'm going to buy something, I would buy it in a 10-pack. That way I know I have enough. If I have uh, several pieces sharpened up, I'm not taking as much time to stop and regrind while I'm welding. So this is a good thing to have because you've got 10 pieces and you have 10 tungstens ready to go. Uh, especially if you're learning and you're dipping and you're having a lot of trouble, sometimes the 10-pack uh, will save your day. Well, with this short video, we hope we've cleared up any questions you might have about tungsten selection, especially for inverter welders. Now, if you have any more questions, please feel free to give us a call at the number listed at the end of the video. And as always, thanks for watching.